This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. In a forest so dark it's impossible to tell where the trees end and the sky begins, our train winds its way down to civilization. Little by little, the small lights of carriage windows come into view into the station below, where we transferred only a few hours ago. As much as we might want to deny it, those lights force us to realize that our time in the dream's world is over. Down there, inescapable reality is waiting for us. By the way, Yumiko, we just spent all of our money doing that amusement park. We are now flat broke. It's already past ten. They've had hours to follow our trail. Once we transfer to the train that'll carry us away from here, we won't be able to turn back. At my side, Yumiko quietly gazes at the back of the seat in front of her. Her eyes aren't hollow and lifeless like they were before. But from the tightly clenched fist resting on the seat by her thigh, I can see that she's still uneasy. I lower my hand from her shoulder to cover the small fist. After a few gentle strokes, she lets her hand fall open, and then turns it to squeeze mine in return. The question's tinged with a little anxiety. We'll take a detour to the north, then head east. From there, we'll change to a different private railway and head further north. Yeah. There are some decently populated towns along the coastal railway that where we shouldn't stand out too much. Hide people among people. Still following that basic principle, I've decided on a slightly more distant destination. However, unless the fundamental dynamics of the situation change, our fugitive lifestyle isn't going to end. From what JB's told me, the East Beach group has some delicate circumstances at the moment. But if that changes, they might go public with this search. The police will get involved. Ichigaya will move in earnest. Even the media will start working against us. At that point, there probably won't be any safe place left for us. We're still two isolated individuals struggling against an incomparably stronger opponent. There's no doubt Yumiko feels the same apprehension. The tone of her voice is low, resigned. Gazing at her slightly downcast face, I finally make up my mind to ask. Actually, Yumiko, I have a question for you. She turns to look at me. Staring straight into her eyes, I continue. Do you want to confront your father? <laughs> if you've got the will, I might have a way. I've been slowly making preparations ever since we ran away. <laughs> oh no, not one of Yuji's n uh, plans. Oh no, he's a guy- Yumiko, I have a plan on how to deal with the situation. If, if Yuji says I have a plan, you freaking run. Because I've seen two of his plans in the other- e In each of the routes- Yuji had, like, a master plan to help the girl. The first route involved him blowing the school up. The second route... Oh, I don't even want to say. that's That was the plan that made me hate Yuji. Where he, like, he's like, where Michiru's like, I want to die. He's like, okay, and then buries her alive in a coffin. And then, like, pumps oxygen in there until she wants to get out. Then he helps her get out, and she's like, Yuji, I'm so grateful to you. It was, like, the most disgustingly manipulative thing I've ever seen in my life. So if, if he's like, I have a plan, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> that's right. We can also run away if that's what you want. If we confront him and lose, we'll be torn apart. But there's risk either way. Yumiko listens to my words quietly and attentively. But as I continue, her gaze slips from mine and begins to fall downward. By the time I finish speaking, she's staring straight at her feet. After a brief pause, she answers in a voice bitter with self-derision. And once again, her voice begins to quaver as she struggles to hold down the tears. I shake my head to deny her words. You're wrong, Yumiko. You have changed. There's no doubt about it. Yes, you tried to make that phone call, but you hung up before he answered, didn't you? Hindsight is 2020. I'm talking about what you were thinking, Yumiko. Yeah. I remember the day when Yumiko dismissed me, the day she tried to leave my life forever. 
Refusing to acknowledge her own will, unable to rely on me, she tried to disappear all on her own. That, Yumiko, would have made the phone call. She would have told her father everything, believing all the while that she was doing me a favor. You pulled yourself back from the edge. You fought down the fear and held on to your own free will. And I'm going to stay with you, no matter what kind of an ending we've got waiting for us. Yumiko froze herself against my chest. Her body's slender and light as always, but today, I can feel a strength in her that wasn't there before. <laughs> There's something there that wasn't there before. Slowly face buried in against my shirt, she gathers her breath. I just sit there, letting her respiration warm my skin, enjoying the affectionate movements of her fingers against my back. And finally... Yumiko pulls away and meets my gaze. That's a coincidence, same here. Simultaneously, our faces break into smiles. There's no hint of strain or awkwardness. They're probably the most easy, natural smiles we've had on our faces in a long time. And again, in Yumiko's eyes, I see something like determination. Resignation might still be a part of it. But that strength I glimpsed in her is real. I absolutely believe that now. Sounds good. Our eyes fixed on each other, we open our mouths to speak. For a long time, our feelings for each other kept us at cross purposes, but now we finally are standing together, facing the same moment, seeing the same future. Seeing the road will travel. Oh! Wait, are we at the end of the route? Okay! So this is the choice for a good ending or a bad ending. Run away together or confront him together. This is a significantly harder decision to make compared to the last two routes that I did. Well, actually, the first one was a hard decision because it's like, do you want really terrible choice or really terrible choice? Whereas this, I feel like there's pros and cons to both. So I'm actually going to have to think about this. So one of these presumably leads us to the good ending. The other will presumably lead to the bad ending. So if we run away together, I feel like it's kind of only a matter of time before eventually her dad... Uh, gets, like, the whole country and the police involved to track us down. That's kind of what they were hinting at earlier. If we confront him together, then there's, there's a chance that we can be rid of this forever, but also there's a chance that it's just like, well, we just ran right to him, and we get split up, and we won't see each other again. But also, I definitely feel like the game is pushing me towards the confront him category. Where they're like, Yuji's got a plan, and the other two roots, Yuji's plan, despite how utterly psychopathic it was, it apparently was the thing that led to the good ending. So... I mean... I guess I... <laughs> do I want to pick the choice that I personally would do in this situation, or do I want to do the choice where that I actually think is the one that will lead to the good ending. Because I feel like those are two different choices. Because if I were actually in this situation, I'd be like, yeah, we're not confronting him because he's crazy and he'll split us up. So I would, like, if I were in this situation, I would probably pick run away. <laughs> Go to a different country or something. But I'm pretty sure that confront him together is going to be what leads us to the good ending. So, which one would people say that I should do? I mean, we're going to eventually make both choices anyways. Either way, we should get both this stream. Are we going to finish up Yumiko's route entirely? Are we going to finish Food of Grisea this week? Oh, maybe. Yeah, we're, I'm going to pick both choices, I guess. <laughs> it's really just a matter of which order that I want to do them in. No spoilers. Yeah, that's true. No spoilers. Don't tell me which one is which. Hmm... You know what? No. Whenever in these situations, I wanna I wanna go with what I personally would go with in the situation. So, I think I'm gonna go run away together at least first. We'll see where this goes. Yeah. So there we go. I made my choice. We'll go back and do the other one. We'll see where this leads. Actively resolving a conflict between human beings is a lot harder than it might sound. First, you need to understand the cause and the context of the disagreement in great detail. Only once you've precisely identified the interests of both sides can you begin devising a plan. And when the conflict's particularly volatile, you're building that strategy on a foundation of sand. All too often, the situation will shift underneath you, rendering all your painstaking preparations useless. 
In other words, when a serious dispute arises between two people, it's pretty damn rare for both parties to walk away satisfied in the end. Yeah, it's fairly, fairly true. Often it comes to an exchange of blows until one side falls. These days, it's also pretty common for a third party to impose an unequal compromise, leaving behind mutual animosity to carry over into another round of conflict. Not to repeat myself, but finding a way to genuinely solve the problem at hand is a far more difficult task. Well, that said, there's one and only one universal solution to any such dilemma. The effect's not always obvious, and it's never quick. The exact results vary with the circumstances. Still, everyone understands its absolute power. So when fiends seem well and truly hopeless, it's a method we often turn to. Time heals all wounds. Human beings forget. Eventually, we die. The irresistible flow of time wears everything away in the end, even our quarrels. Another hot one. After carefully lowering a box of industrial wire to the ground, I wipe the sweat from my brow with the towel draped around my shoulders. September's nearly at an end, but from the weather, you'd think we were still mired in the dog days of summer. The sun blazes ruthlessly down the sky, and its blinding reflection from the sea is just as bad. But then again, compared to the guys who are actually out there fishing, I don't have much to complain about. A young man carrying a similar load calls out to me from behind. Got it. Something happened at the office? Oh, great. It'll be a studio disconnected. It's been a while since it's done that. Oh, hey! We reconnected. Okay, well, so a couple things happened. So my PC overheated, so I had to try cooling it down. So I closed some things that were running in the background. Uh, I also turned the AC back on. I don't think you should hear it because I'm not using my Blue Yeti mic. I'm just using my headset mic. So if you hear a little background noise now, it's the AC. I have to have it on because it's a hot one out. And the other thing that happened is, when I tried opening Task Manager, um, the game just skipped a huge amount of text really quickly. So if you see the text is a different color now, it's because technically, I already saw it, but literally it was like, each frame was a new thing. So I didn't read any of it, it literally just skipped a huge amount though, so... I don't know. No, stream's not cancelled, stream's not cancelled. Now, I'm gonna try to finish it today. Unless the good ending takes a really long time after that, uh after that choice, or if, or if this is the good ending. Again, my prediction is that this is the bad ending, but I chose it because that's the choice that I would make, and that the other one is the good ending. And hey, if that works, then great. We get to end on the good ending for Grisea, period. Anyhow, yeah, ba back, back to business. A young man carrying a similar load calls out to me from behind. Got it. Something happened at the office? <laughs> oh, no. I'm not the harbor's bouncer, you know. I take the rough wooden box from my coworker's hands and add it to the pile with a sigh. Is Oishi-san at the main office or out at a site? So dependent. Well, not that I really expect him to stand up to a bunch of roughnecks with a body like that. I run into the man every once in a while on the job. He's always been on the scrawny side. I feel attacked. <laughs> Easy for you to say. I'll take care of this one, but I think I'm going to tell the office we need to start relying on the police. <laughs> you are the superhuman man. The police, huh? That's a little ironic. <laughs> I wonder how much time has passed. <laughs> Is this, like, several years in the future, or is this, like, the next week? <laughs> a troublemaker. Guess you could say that. Probably not in the way you're thinking, though. Mm -hmm. Leaving my coworker cocking his head in puzzlement, I push open the glass door to the harbor office and step inside. We working at the harbor! The air conditioning quickly cools my sweaty body. By the time I reach the phone, my overheated brain's finally beginning to function again. Hey, it's Yumiko! Yeah, this is the part it skipped to. <laughs> Just like, well, Yumiko's still here, that's good. Hey, Yumiko! You went out? Hey, we're back in Mishima. Either that or it's just they're reusing the Mishima uh, cape at town assets. Yeah, something happened at work. My boss was kind enough to let me head home afterward. Nothing big. I'll tell you about it while we walk. 
Taking over for Yumiko behind the stroller. She's been pushing them all, and I head down the road toward our apartment. Wait, do we have a kid? Is this far in the future now? It's a road we walked as students a few years ago. Oh yeah, this is Mishima, but the circumstances are a little different now. Today, Yumiko and I are walking it together, pushing our son along with us. Oh wow, this doesn't seem like a bad ending. <laughs> We're happily married and have a son. Oh, this is cute. Man, Yumiko has aged very well. Either that or we had the son very soon after running away. The two of us succeeded in running away from Yumiko's father. I did have a plan for a direct confrontation, but in the end the risk was just too great. Above all else, Yumiko chose this path. Hypothetically, if her decision had been different, I would have put my fears aside and taken the other road. Our continued life as fugitives absolutely wasn't easy or pleasant. Living in constant fear took its toll on our spirits, and just scraping by was a painful challenge. There wasn't a single moment of true peace. However, on the day we made our choice, Yumiko and I accepted that struggle together. We had to change our hiding place many times, living under false names and working menial jobs, but our determination never faltered again. And about two years after our escape, the situation changed dramatically. Is that true, Julia? That day, my work cell phone didn't just buzz once and fall silent. It rained and rained until I finally picked up. It was the first time that had happened since my desertion. Surprising enough, but the call wasn't it itself was downright shocking. Hey! JB was calling to inform us that Sakaki Michiaki had aborted his clandestine search and formally disowned his daughter, Sakaki Yumiko. That seems pretty nice. I mean, I guess reconciliation would have been better, but... I mean, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> the reason was clear enough. Eager to obtain an obedient puppet to lead the East Beach group or after his retirement, Michiaki had grown frustrated with the fruitless pursuit of his daughter and adopted a son. Oh! It's not clear why he didn't select one of Yumiko's half-sisters, but perhaps he simply had enough of child-rearing for one lifetime. In any case, Yumiko's lost all value to him, so, he's continued his invest so he discontinued his investigation into her whereabouts. So in the end, Yumiko really was nothing but a pawn to him. Normally, you wouldn't abandon the search for a daughter who lived under your roof just because you adopted a son. The casual way Michiaki gave up on Yumiko seemed like a blatant demonstration of how little he'd cared for her as anything but a tool. Well, then it's good we got away from that tool. No matter how completely she'd thrown away her feelings for the man, it's hard to imagine this wouldn't hurt Yumiko. <laughs> He actually opened his eyes, and not in a derpy way. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if he wanted to harass us, it would have been easy enough just to pretend he was continuing the search. It was only a possibility, but Sakaki Michiaki might have been showing us compassion in his way. Not that there was any way for us to learn the truth now. <laughs> Genie, you're free! <laughs> Why, thank you. How gracious of you. You probably had a lot to do with that, didn't you? Sorry. Oh, and get, we get to leave the crap assassin in your life, huh? Right. Since my kidnapping of Yumiko was never officially reported, there was no legal obstacle to us coming in from the cold. Still, I created an embarrassing political problem for Ichigaya and deserted my duties. A severe penalty was completely warranted. I honestly never thought they'd let me go so easily. JB must have pulled a hell of a lot of strings on my behalf. Not to mention everything she did for me while we were on the run. All things considered, I owed my former superior a debt I would never be able to repay. That's so. Don't have any idea who that would be, but tell them I'm grateful. What's wrong, Julia? For some reason, JB rephrases my request in an oddly careful tone. The conversation continued for a little while after that, as we wrapped up the remaining formalities and briefly discussed the future. Yeah. You too, Julia. 
And then, just like that, the call came to an end. Staring down at my silent phone, I took a deep breath and slowly exhaled. That was the last time JB and I spoke. Two years have passed since that day, but that black phone hasn't run even once. Yeah, because we aren't employed there anymore. I'm surprised we got to keep the cell phone. When I tell Yumiko about the incident this afternoon, her expression grows troubled. I'm fine. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. I mean, you know I can handle myself against a fisherman or two, right? I don't know, man. The fisherman zombies are, like, one of the nastiest zombies in Plants vs. Zombies 2. After that phone call two years ago, Yumiko and I returned to Mishima Cape, the town where we'd met. Thanks to JB's arrangements, I gained regular employment at the town's harbor management office, and the two of us were able to rent a respectable apartment. Nice! I did make an effort not to stand out too much, but I haven't quite lost the habits I picked up in my previous line of work. It's become common for me to handle some of the more troublesome situations that arise around the harbor. Aw oh man, that guy knows how to fight! Let him beat up the fishermen for us! <laughs> and that, of course, ends up making Yumiko worry like this. Oh. I feel bad, but it's also been a way for the newcomer to got, who got his job through mysterious connections to earn some trust. Personally, I don't mind, as long as there's no real danger. How about the other students? We have not heard from any of the other students at all. Which, I mean, I, that's fine. Yumiko draws her body close to mine. Mm. Yes, true. Gazing pointedly down at our child, she hits me with a potent dose of guilt. Oh, Yeah. You're right. I can't just think about myself anymore. Yumiko and the small child at her side are part of my life now. Y did, did you give it a name? <laughs> I call you kid. From now on, I'll have to gradually start passing those problems off to the police. Alright. I promise I'll work on that. Honestly, though, it might take some time. Oh, Sorry, Yumiko. There's a smile on her face as she pulls away. This doesn't seem like the bad ending. Maybe the maybe the Yumiko bad ending just isn't that bad, but like the Sachi bad ending and the Michiru bad ending were like catastrophically bad. <laughs> Whereas this is like this seems like a happy ending. The only person who's not having a happy ending right now is the child that Michiaki adopted, basically. But even then, maybe he's like, wait, you want to adopt me and just give me this railroad tycoon business? Heck yes. <laughs> maybe this is a win-win situation for everyone. <laughs> right. Yumiko stands up and heads briskly for the kitchen, where she begins washing the dishes from our meal. It's hard to believe this aproned young woman is the same person as that grouchy girl in a school uniform I met a few years ago. She's become so motherly already. After the birth of our child, Yumiko's been talking a great deal about family. I suppose that's only natural now that we have a son, but I think there's another shade of meaning hiding in those words. Yumiko had another family once, one that fell apart in a terrible way. To me, it looks as though that loss is still casting a shadow over her. Sensing my gaze, Yumiko looks back over her shoulder with a curious expression. Nothing. Just thinking you're really starting to look the part, Mom. This is adorable! I love this. Something about Yumiko's smile suggests she's happier than her lukewarm response would suggest. Normally, women don't like compliments that remind them of their age, but I think Yumiko's eager to take on the role of a mother, to become part of a real family. Hopefully I can become a halfway decent father myself before too long. I feel like Yuji would either be, like, a great dad, or an absolutely abysmally awful dad. <laughs> and I don't think there would be any leeway there. <laughs> well, I'm still not thinking like one as you pointed out this afternoon. Right. Yumiko turns back to the dishes. The room falls silent except for the sound of water flowing from the tap. Is that it after all, Yumiko? With the words running silently through my mind, I gaze at my wife's back. I mean, you know, this doesn't seem like a bad ending. It really doesn't. Yuji, well, hmm. 
I don't think Yuji would be an incompetent dad. He definitely... I feel like he would know how to do all the dad things, like fixing up places around the house. I just think he would lack tact and might be a little harsh on the discipline, perhaps. He would also probably say some dumb stuff. But, yeah, eh, he could be decent. 28, 29, 30. No problems with the quantity or delivery date. Opening up the small binder dangling around my neck, I flip to a blank form and make a few quick check marks. It's a simple job today. Dragging emergency rations for disaster relief out of the warehouse, inspecting their contents, and exchanging them where necessary. It's also incredibly monotonous. Naturally enough, my mind turns to other things. Should I say something to Yumiko? I'm pretty sure that Yumiko's memories of her parents are still weighing on her mind. It would be easy enough to say something, but I don't know if that's wise. It might only end up making her even unhappier. So long as she doesn't bring it up first, maybe the kinder thing would be to pretend that I hadn't noticed. But is that really good enough? It certainly doesn't feel... satisfying. A co-worker slides the office window open and calls out to me from behind. What? Oishi-san again? Have him talk to the police first, and then we'll... Halfway through my sentence, the young man shakes his head and interrupts. Oh, no! This is how the bad ending's gonna start. Not Amine! Suo? Ah, right, got it. Just tell her I'll call her back. Oh, great. Of all the people to hear back from, why did it have to be Amine? I'd much rather hear from Sachi or Michiru. Guess at least it's not Makina. A little while later, after reaching a good point to take a break, I take out my cell phone and call up with a list of contacts. Maybe in the few, maybe in like the what five years that have passed since then, maybe Makina is now very mature. <laughs> maybe she's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed of how I acted back then. That would actually be hilarious. <laughs> a little while later, after good, reaching a good point to take a break, I take out my cell phone and call up the list of contacts. It's rare for me to use this thing for anything other than talking with Yumiko, but there are a few other numbers in here as well. Moving the cursor to Suo Amine, I press the dial button. Why? <laughs> Not bad. But before we chat, I've got something to say to you. Don't call my office. We've been over this before, haven't we? Knowing you, I'm sure you enjoy making my coworkers wonder why I get calls from a woman other than my wife, but it's a pain in the ass on my end. That's not cool. This is why Amine sucks! She, she's not the worst, but she's awful. She's like, I want people to think you're promiscuous. It's like, no! No! Nope. So, why the call? You need something? <clears throat> I guess they're not keeping you busy enough at that restaurant. I'm going to hang up now. This route was great because Amine wasn't in it. And Makina. Amine's flustered yelp brings my fingers to a halt just before I'm about to end the call. Must have gotten really worked up. For some reason, she started talking to, like, a certain someone who's been working with her since Mihama Academy shut down. Nice to see they're getting along, I guess. Oh, is, is Makina working there as well? <laughs> it's your own fault for saying that crap to a newlywed man with a child. No, you're just being disgusting. That wasn't an overreaction. It was the only appropriate response. Thank you! Man, I can't believe I'm actually relating to Yuji on this one, but yes, he is 100% correct here. Do me a favor and avoid those sorts of jokes in the future. If you want to flirt with young guys, do it, but you can't flirt with married guys. It's not allowed. Trotting out her convenient poor little country girl accent, Amine begins a familiar womanly woe routine. It's kind of nice to know she hasn't changed at all, but it's also a giant pain in the ass to deal with. I'm left with a wry half-smile on my face. To be fair, I probably would have just brushed off that kind of stupid joke a couple years ago, but now that I've started a family with Yumiko, I don't want to talk about that sort of thing even as a joke with an old friend. Yeah, because you actually got a shred of common sense now! Fine, whatever. So how's it going over there anyway? You two doing alright? A change of topic seems warranted. I switch the focus of the conversation to Amine. She's been spending pretty much all of her time helping out at her family's traditional restaurant, as the first step to eventually taking over the business. 
Sounds like it's been especially busy lately, but they're hanging in there. Of course, all our former classmates from Mahama Academy are off living their own lives as well. Sounds like things are going pretty well on the whole. That's right, very smooth. With the words halfway out of my mouth, I find myself hesitating. Not really. Back when the two of us were still on the run, I did tell Amine a little about Yumiko's past. And although I never learned the details, I know Amine's carrying scars from her past as well. She just might have some useful insight to offer. Hey, Amine, there's something I wanted to ask you about, if that's alright. <clears throat> nope! I'm trying to have a serious discussion here, Amine. Clearly noticing my serious tone of voice, she finally stopped screwing around. So here's the thing. While I was talking, Amine simply repeated, uh-huh, in a thoughtful tone of voice. Oh, I, I said that in a poor voice tone of voice, as if comparing the story against her own experience. You think? I'm skipping if they say stupid, inappropriate things that have no bearing on the actual story. Yumiko and I chose to run away from Sakaki Michiaki instead of facing him. Talking with her lingering regrets regarding her father might be taken as an admission that she's unhappy about the choice we made. You could twist that into a criticism of me or a sign of dissatisfaction with our life together. I, I'm not <laughs> leaving dialogue on the screen when it's painful and stupid and pointless. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> Considering Yumiko's personality, it seems very plausible she's keeping quiet out of fear I'll take it the wrong way. No, you were a big help. Thanks. After ending my call with Amine, I just stand there for a while, lost in thought. We have a happy life. As long as Yumiko's with me, I don't need anything else. And I think she feels the same. But if we continue to ignore her regrets entirely, I think the shadow of the family she lost is going to linger over her for a very long time. Maybe that's inevitable either way. Maybe that's the price we have to pay for running away. Still, that doesn't mean I can just turn a blind eye. Guess it's worth asking. Opening my cell phone once more, I move the cursor to my most commonly called number and hit the dial button. <laughs> oh, we're calling Wendy's? Oh. A cool sea breeze takes the edge off the late summer heat. Those unreasonably, those un These unseasonably warm days are going to be continuing for a while, but once the sun starts to fall, there's a hint of chill in the air. The seasons pass so quickly that it's almost scary. The reason I called Yumiko earlier was to propose we take a walk after meeting up this evening, instead of heading straight home as usual. Yumiko seems a little puzzled at first, but he agreed easily enough. Well, just wanted to make a little time for us to talk, I, I guess. Watching my wife's long hair fluttering in the wind, I finally broached the topic I've been avoiding for so long. Yumiko, I've been wondering. Do you really have no regrets? She's like, of course I have regrets. I regret eating so much ramen when I was in high school. I'm talking about your father. She's like, in case you didn't know, I don't have a father anymore. It's been on my mind for a while now. When you talk about me and our son, sometimes it seems like you're seeing someone else as well. All of a sudden, there's a deeply guilty look on her face. Looks like Amine was right. Yumiko was worried about admitting her feelings. I'm not criticizing you, Yumiko. If anything, I've been feeling a little guilty myself. I'm the one who made this happen, after all. Would you like to see your father again? I don't know how long it'll take, but if that's what you want, I'll try to make it happen. Please be honest. Once again, I turn my and gaze straight at Yumiko. A familiar, beautiful face looks back at me, illuminated by the setting sun. 
Yumiko murmurs those words in a pensive tone, then bends down and reaches a hand inside the stroller I've been pushing him on. Stroking the head of our son affectionately, she continues in a quiet voice. So then... <laughs> Is this where it turns to the bad ending? He's like, I hate you, kills her. <laughs> that, see, that that's like a grisse of bad ending. It's the girl dies, pretty much. She looks up at me and smiles. There's so much strength in Yumiko's eyes right now. More than I ever would have thought possible from her. This isn't anything like that sharp but fragile mask she always used to wear. It's the expression of someone with a firm will and courage to spare. They do say women get a bit of steel in their spine after becoming a mother. You kinda have to, because the process of having a kid is not exactly an easy thing. And looking at Yumiko's face, I find myself agreeing. Understood. Sorry for dragging it out of you. I know that was hard to say. But after another gentle smile, her expression glows, grows slightly gloomy. The search may have been discontinued, but that doesn't mean Michiaki's eager to reconcile with his disobedient daughter, let alone the man who carried her off. It might be difficult right now, to be honest, but that might change with time. Things that seem permanent can change with surprising swiftness when the right moment arrives. Just as our fugitive life abruptly came to an end, someday we might be able to put this bitterness behind us. Right now, the passage of time is our greatest ally. Yeah, that's right. That might be all we need. I bend down and peer into the stroller. Our son, too young to even speak, is sleeping peacefully inside. Stroking his cheek very softly, I speak to Yumiko. We might already have a potential peacemaker. Yeah. No matter where you go, people love to dote on their grandchildren. It might be a little much to expect that cold-hearted capitalist to transform into a smiling, genial old man once he lays eyes on his grandson, but somehow I think there might be cause for hope. I mean, he wasn't really that happy to be a father, so I'm not really sure if that will work, but, you know, hey, you can, you can be optimistic. I haven't forgotten that story JB told me the day our life as fugitives ended. Depending on how you look at it, that might have been an act of mercy. The greatest possible kindness Michiaki could have shown his daughter. Naturally, I'm not planning to act based on the most optimistic possible interpretation. Still, for some reason I can't help thinking that there was some real compassion in that decision. I'm not sure exactly why I feel that way, but I think I have a vague idea. He's got some- it's got something to do with the way I've changed. The way Yumiko and our child have changed me. That ugly, impenetrable black fog inside me has been thinning out these last few years. Now and again, I can even make out a beam- they cut- the text cuts out at the bottom. You put too much text on screen at once. You dope. Thank you, Yumiko. Well, nowhere in particular. I stroke my puzzled wife's head affectionately, then begin to walk slowly along, gazing up at the pale red evening sky stretching out above us. Family wasn't always a word that meant much to me. For a long time, there was nothing but a gaping void where that part of me should have been. But in meeting Yumiko and sharing my life with her, I've started to discover small fragments of what I lacked for so long. Sakaki Michiaki ignored his family, threw his wife aside, and tried to use his daughter as a tool. And in his own way, I think he's a hollow, lonely man. Not so different from how I used to be. I don't know how long it will take, but maybe one day I can tell Sakaki Michiaki what I've learned about that part of him that he never even knew was missing. Okay. Well, that was one of the endings. I'm assuming that was the bad ending, because there is still some stuff 
open up that it didn't really get answered, but that was a much, much better bad ending than the other two routes. The other two routes ended with Sachi's bad ending. Sachi got run over by a truck and died. And then Michiru's bad ending. She attempted suicide and became effectively a vegetable. And this ending is like, oh, Yumiko's bad ending. You get married, you have a kid, you have a happy little life, but you didn't reconcile with your terrible dad. It's like, you know... No way, that wasn't the good ending. That had to have been the bad ending, because if it was the good ending, we would have seen the credits. That was also very short for a good ending. I think... I, I wouldn't call that a bad ending. That was just a less good ending. At least that... Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. But 